It's a new year, and I'm fairly certain that a lot of people got 3D printers for Christmas as presents. Now this means that forums will soon be, if not already, inundated with help requests. I can tackle all of them, but today I want to tackle the one issue which keeps coming up year in and year out, both in forums and through personal messages to me. And that is clogged nozzles. Yes, even though this subject has been covered a billion times, questions still come up. So I figured today we could look at the anatomy of a hot end, discuss how they work, why clogs and gems happen, and also all the ways I tend to clear them up. Now clogs and gems are two different things that happen for different reasons, but tend to produce the same result, and that is lots of frustration, under extrusion, or no extrusion at all. In order to explain in as much detail as possible, I printed these two cross sections of the two most popular hotends on the market, D3D V6 and the Mark 10 hotend, which is pretty much the same on most budget printers coming out of China these days. Now, while there are more types of hotends on the market, the basis of how each hotend works is the same. You have the heat sink over here, you have the heat break, which is right in between there, there is the heater block, and also the nozzle. The process is relatively simple from the outside. You have a heater cartridge and a thermistor that keep the heat consistent in the heat block. This is what melts the filament before it is pushed through and out of the nozzles. However, this heat needs to be contained as you only want the filament to melt within the heat block area and nowhere else. This is where the heat break and heat sink come in. These two things right here. The heat break's job is, as named, to break the heat from moving up into the filament path and avoid having the filament melt inside the heatsink. Heat breaks tend to have a very thin casing around the exposed areas in order to be as efficient as possible. While the heat block generates heat and also heats up the heat break, the heatsink is actually kept cool by a fan, which in turn cools down the top part of the heat break, which in turn keeps the heat contained within the heat block. Now if we flip the hot ends over to see a cross section, you'll see that these two tend to work slightly differently. The V6 is considered to be an all metal hot end. The reason is that the PTFE tube that guides the filament stops at the very top of the heat break. This is the heat break right here. While on the Mark 10, the PTFE goes straight through the heat break and into the heat block and sits flush with the nozzle down here. Now let's start with clogs, as they tend to usually be the same on all types of hot ends and are much more straightforward. Some filaments like wood filament tend to have fine particles inside, which is why most manufacturers recommend using a minimum of 0.5 mm nozzles instead of the widely used 0.4, as this gives it more room for the fibers to go through. Fibers tend to end up getting jammed right at the end here before the exit of the nozzle and eventually will constrict the flow of the filament that's going through, which will result in the extruder skipping because, well, the filament path has been completely blocked. Now to clear these up, it usually only takes a simple acupuncture needle, inserting the needle into the nozzle hole and wiggling it around. This tends to unclog the nozzle, resulting in a lot of gunk being spat out. This would be the overcooked filament along with the fibers. Once cleaned, I always tend to use a nozzle cleaning filament to remove any additional residue. Now bear in mind that this is usually very expensive at around 20 euros per 100 grams of filament, but it will last you a lifetime as you only need a couple of centimeters for every clean cycle. This type of filament contains a compound that adheres to most polymers and byproduct and completely clears out the nozzle as it is fed through. I usually set the hot end temperature to 10 degrees more than the filament that I used which actually clogged the nozzle and then just push it through, which does the trick. If the needle trick doesn't work, you can then try a cold pull. Now if you have a direct extruder, it is ideal to remove any tension from the idler in order not to damage the drivers of the extruder. The process involves heating up your nozzle to the highest temperature it can go. Once the temperature has been reached, slowly take some nylon filament and insert it slowly into the nozzle by hand. Hand. While you are still pushing the filament through with your hand, reset the extruder temperature to zero. While the temperature is slowly going down, keep pushing the filament through by hand until you cannot push any further. At this point, let the temperature go all the way down to room temperature. Once set, reheat the temperature to about 200 degrees, and as you are doing so, start pulling on the filament with a bit of force. As the temperature goes higher, you'll notice that at some point the filament's starting to stretch as you're putting tension to it. At this point, give it a good tug. Please note that you should never perform cold pulls on ruby nozzles as you risk severely damaging it. 
If done successfully, you should hear a kind of popping sound, which is the suction within the nozzle. Also, if done correctly, the end of the filament should be shaped like the inside of the nozzle with a microscopic tip representing the nozzle hole. This means that you manage to cover the whole inside of the hot end. Doing this a couple of times ensures your nozzle is completely clean. Now, if neither of the two methods helped or the filament path is restricted and you cannot get any filament into the nozzle itself, chances are you have a jam. The most common type of jam happens when the hot end is not heated up to the high enough temperature for the filament being used. The filament ends up simply softening enough to get to the nozzle and trying to forcefully make it through. However, it doesn't manage because there's not enough heat and the filament has not melted enough. This is a simple fix as a higher temperature usually helps here. Now with the Mark 10 hot end, most jams tend to occur between the nozzle and the PTFE tube. If the PTFE tube is not sitting perfectly flush with the nozzle, like for example, in this case, filament tends to start accumulating and start restricting the flow of the filament. Now there are also cases where the PTFE coupler, which is this thing right here, which holds the PTFE tube in place, it starts slowly failing. This is a common occurrence with cheaper ones. As retractions on the print start to happen, the PTFE starts slowly generating slack around the coupler and starts being slowly pushed in and out, creating that little gap again in between the nozzle and the edge of the PTFE, resulting in the same accumulation of filament, which in turn restricts the flow. On the V6, jams tend to occur due to heat creep. Now, heat creep usually happens when your heatsink fan is not efficient as it should be, which results in the heat break right here, not being able to efficiently keep the heat contained within the heat block. The result is that the filament starts slowly melting further up from the heat block and into the heat break due to the higher temperatures. Eventually, the filament will reach a point between the melted state and also the solid state coming in. And where those two meet, there will be a jam. This will obviously restrict the flow completely. In both these cases, it would be ideal to take apart the hot end to clean out the path. Now, while this sounds like a headache, well, it's actually because it is, but it is the necessary evil that at some point you will need to tackle. One tool I always recommend having is a heat gun as this makes your life a lot easier when having a 3D printer. It also makes it easier to clear out these kind of jams. The first step is always to heat up the hot end and remove the nozzle. Now the heat will expand the metal within the heat block, which in turn makes nozzle removal much easier. To remove the nozzle, most heat blocks need to be held in place by a spanner of sorts in order not to undo the heat break or something like this, which I had 3D printed. Now, even though the Sun Mark 10 hot ends have two screws to hold it in place, I still tend to use a securing device to avoid damaging it. Then you can simply unscrew the nozzle with either a socket wrench or a nozzle wrench like these. Or in my case, I like to make it a little bit easier. I use the Z-Catch, which is a tool I bought at Earth, consisting of two sockets within each other. The outer one holds the nozzle block in place and the inner one gets a socket attached to it for the nozzle, which you can simply then twist. Once the nozzle is removed and you can confirm that the filament path is blocked, the next step I usually take is to slightly heat up the heat break and heat sink with the heat gun. This will soften the filament jam inside. Now, I don't want it to be extremely hot, so just a couple of seconds should be fine. Then, using a long metal pin like this ejector pin here, which I got from one of the G-Tech machines, simply insert it from the top of the hot end and push the jammed filament through. This process makes life a lot easier. It doesn't involve completely disassembling the hot end, which can be a pain to take apart in some printers. Once cleared, simply screw the nozzle back in while the heat block is cold and then hot tighten it by heating the nozzle to the highest it can go and tighten it once more. Now, if you have a Mark 10 hot end, it would be ideal at this time to also cut a small piece away from the PTFE tube that goes into the hot end if this is damaged, blocked, or looks burnt. Once again, make sure it is perfectly flush. Having a PTFE tube cutter can come in very handy as this makes sure it's a perfect perpendicular cut. Once done, simply reassemble. Now, I hope this video will help those of you who are new to the hobby and will encounter these issues because this is not a matter of if it will happen, but definitely a matter of when it will happen. That is it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. For the new members in the 3D printing community, a very big welcome. If you like what you've seen today, make sure to subscribe. I do tend to put out a few useful videos once in a while. So thank you guys for watching. As always, make sure you like, share, subscribe, ring that bell for notification. And as always, happy making, guys.